nowadays more and more employers are actually requiring portfolios and even if they don't require it, it really helps you stand out from other applicants, especially because um, it is kind of a newer thing or less common thing to have as an instructional designer. And um, so Devlin Peck, who is a, I guess like instructional design influencer in the field, he did a study with hiring managers for specifically instructional designers and found that 45%, so almost half of them stated that having a portfolio played a significant role in the hiring process. And then from that same study also found that portfolios are in the top three items that hiring managers consider when they're hiring someone. And that came after professional experience and the actual interview. So clearly portfolio is a super um, valuable, I guess, item to have when you're applying to jobs. Um, it really is a great way to showcase your work. And even just beyond the like applying to a new job, it's really a great way to track your own personal progress and see how like how far you've come in your instructional design career. And then, um, like I said, a great way to showcase what sort of skills you have, whether that be software um, or just more theory and concepts. So uh, in your portfolio, you really want to showcase your your set of skills, of technical skills um, and also your your knowledge in learning consulting. And we'll see a few different examples to see uh, different approaches for how you can do that. Uh, of course, Articulate 360 is by far the most popular tool that we use in our industry. Um, I know not every single person will have. OK, yes, Lectora. I have not used Lectora, but thank you for adding that. Um, uh, another big one is, of course, usually if people don't use Articulate 360, they may be using Adobe Captivate. Adobe Creative Cloud uh, has so many different apps in that suite. It's very, very useful. Uh, we can also show off your video editing skills. Um, one thing that we like to use is like TechSmith Camtasia a lot. There's also Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects. Uh, you can also use, and you'll see on our own portfolios. Uh, Dana and I have used Powtoons, which is also very similar to Beyond. Uh, it's not listed here, but if you are making things like infographics, we also like to use Canva. Um, they have a really nice free version, and it's a little more affordable than some of these other programs. And we also still use, uh, you, you can totally use basic tools as well, such as Google Slides or PowerPoint. Now, the important thing you want to showcase is a diversity of different learning products that you've created. Uh, so this could be job aids. Um, it could be infographics or diagrams. It could also be uh, if you did if you designed a training program, just kind of having a short synopsis of what was the training goal or what was the business need you were trying to solve and then uh, a very short summary of how you went about that and what the results are. Um, and uh, you want to show them kind of your writing style. If you have a job aid or manual, that's pretty much going to capture it. Um, you can also show them visual design skills and uh, and and <laughs> sorry. And the and you can also mention uh, important models or you can use a model like Addy and have a project and kind of show how you went through every stage of that design process. This is just like a super brief pros and cons table about each website builder that we've pulled up. Um, <clears throat> so on the very easy side, if you don't have a portfolio, you can totally build one in Google Sites. It's just it's a super easy and fast way to to build a portfolio and it's free if you have a Google account which is also free um, but it is very limited in customizability so it I feel like you can usually tell if someone uses Google sites to build their portfolio so it's, it's harder to um, differentiate make it your own and you can't upload SCORM files if you wanted to showcase um, those sort of projects but I still think it's fine to use if, if you don't have a portfolio, you just want to get started very quickly. I think it is much better to have a portfolio on Google Sites than no portfolio at all. Um, so just want to put that in there. So, uh, you know, don't feel pressured to maybe use some of the more elaborate builders um, uh, if that's what's stopping you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and on the other end of the spectrum is HTML, CSS, and just, you know, making your entire website from scratch, which, um, like, if you have the front-end coding knowledge to do that, you, that's totally an option, um, and you can make it super customizable to what you want. Um, but if you don't have any front-end coding knowledge, it is probably going to be a challenge to do that, and I don't know if it's worth the time to learn that in order to create an instructional design portfolio because I don't um, coding is not a skill you really need in instructional design um, but if it's also a passion project go for it um, another cool one to point out is webflow and I think that's a less common one it's a um, it's customizable um, it's advertised as like not coding but you're using coding concepts to design a website so in a way it's like you're building a website from scratch using coding concepts without actually coding fully customizable if you do already have the html or and css skills i feel like it might be if, it might be good <laughs> it might be uh, something that's easier than doing it from scratch uh but it's, it's still it's got quite the learning curve there mm -hmm. Yeah, and they do have a free tier, so if you want to just try it out before investing money in, you could totally do that. Um, another popular one, WordPress. I saw some people mention that. Um, you know, it's based off of themes, so you, you're not starting from scratch, um, and then you can customize it to an extent to make it your own. And they have free versions, as well as paying extra for, um, for a premium version. Um, I would say Weebly, Squarespace, and Wix kind of all fall in the same wavelength in terms of they have like some pretty nice looking themes and templates that you can start from to uh, customize and make your own. And um, and I think Squarespace and Wix don't have a free version, but um, I don't think it's like super expensive, but um, so it's worth looking into. Um, and then I personally, my website's on Adobe Portfolio and that's pretty easy to use. It is like you choose a theme and then you build it and it's free with an Adobe Creative Cloud, Creative Cloud subscription. Um, and it it's um, more limited in its customizability is what I found, but um, it works for my, my needs. Um, so yeah, so definitely check, check some of these out. These are all really good starting places if you don't have one already. 